I'm the uh, Chief of On Sound Fire Services, Chief Nowak, and I uh, invite the Council to uh, go to Councillor Dare, page 132, uh, Fire Services Budget. <laughs> A one, a three, and a two. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the chief is here. Are there any questions or comments? Perhaps we'll uh, invite the chief to make comments. <laughs> Sorry, you know, this back on. This is the arbitrated award. So, <clears throat> what what are the actual amounts of the award then? Uh, the years were broken down into a number of. Uh, Payouts in each year, but the end for 2009 is 3.6 percent. The end rate for 2010 is 3.8 percent, and the end rate for 2011 is 3.6 percent. And we need to start negotiating the next three years. Then we're back in negotiation for uh, next year. Thank you. Just um, to the treasurer, where does that put us? Your Worship, that's uh, resulted in a late change to our budget from 4.48 to 4.68 percent. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say that the arbitration system in Ontario is completely broken. Uh, but I'm going to think it, and I'm going to think it louder and louder as we move forward. Is there any recourse in terms of where we sit? This is entirely decided by the arbitrator, and then the municipality just has to come up with the additional funds. That is correct. We will be pursuing this um, with the Minister of Labour and others uh, at the upcoming uh, Good Roads Conference in Toronto, uh, as well as uh, pursuing it through various associations uh, as we move forward. It's simply not, uh, not acceptable that uh, the, the municipality's ability to pay is not first and foremost uh, considered. Uh, in, in this arbitration or in any arbitration process, I would say. Thank you, Worship. Just a very few changes to this budget since the last time that Council met at pre-budget, and those include the addition of uh, $400 to support uh, the City's contribution to Doors Open. Uh, you'll see $10,000 in the Director's budget from uh, reserves for trails, and that's basically unspent money from 2011, and that's our contribution to that. Uh, grant that we had received. <clears throat> You'll see under the facilities area that the, there's some revised numbers to reflect the new agreement that Council has with the attack. 
the Festival of Northern Lights, you'll see it's uh, reflected at 70,000, which uh, is certainly the partnership amount. And you'll see uh, from last time a change in the Home Expo budget. You'll see uh, improved revenues expected there compared to last time we met, and, and that highlights the changes in that department. Again. Pam, the uh, facility bookings, what, did, what do we have in there? I just can't seem to find it right now for the rec center. What is there an anticipated number? Very simply, our logic was we took the Coliseum, which has one pad, and we doubled the approximately doubled those revenues because we're having two pads. And of course, um, it's just an approximation. Those numbers on the tally sheet, there isn't a backup sheet. They're only on the tally sheet. As well, we did the same with the expenses. So it's basically the policy of them. They are very broad numbers, and we'll certainly be watching very closely how they develop during the year, <coughs> and hopefully have much more refined numbers for 2013. So, but Wayne, under, and I understand that it's everyone's best guesstimate then on the number for still the amount for facility bookings am i reading yes oh sorry i was missing that line okay that's the difference there so we're showing an increase in revenue of two hundred thousand more or less <clears throat> Thank you, that's the line I'm voting for. <clears throat> Thank you, at our last budget I meeting, mean, there was a request for a report on the minor hockey, the minor sports subsidy. Um, just, is that in this budget? I'm never sure. There's two budgets that kind of, there's one that deals with buildings and one that deals with bookings, and I'm not sure which budget. Through you, Your Worship, I did go back and check that resolution because, Councillor, you mentioned that report the other night, and it's to go through Rec Committee to Council, and that is a report that deals with the subsidy amount that is provided to minor sports groups who are renting ice time, floor time, soccer fields. So uh, it, it's going through Rec Committee and, and to Council. Just on, just about, um, would what we charge to use city facilities not have an impact on the 2012 budget? Certainly it would, depending on the agreements we have with the users. I, I believe at this time we haven't anticipated any change in the figures we're presenting today because we don't have that approval, that authority. But they, they could if we make a change, most likely for half a year would be my feeling. Well, I would think for like ice, but it wouldn't apply until the next, this, the fall season of next. Mr. Ritchie next has year. calculated those numbers, and I could certainly bring them tomorrow evening and share them, at least so Council understands the magnitude of 30%, which is what we do now, 25% <clears throat> and 20%. I'm happy to get those out to you tomorrow, and if you want to have a discussion, and you know, it would be up to you whether or not you make that decision or send it back to Rec Committee. Certainly in this case, Your Worship, time is on our side. Final budget will be in February. I believe that report will be going to prior to that time. Should Council accept it, it can only improve our bottom line. So I, I'm not sure that it's necessary that we have that information tomorrow unless Council wants to make that decision without the report going to committee. But as long as that report was to committee before February, you could certainly make that decision and we could uh, make those adjustments very quickly. Um. I respect that. I just kind of like to do look at all parts of the budget when we're looking at all parts of the budget and not a little bit here and a little bit there. But that's just that's just me. And and I know things are fluid. Sometimes something comes out and we have to. But we're thinking about the budget now and that four point you know, six percent. So. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, my only comment would be that that is certainly 
a discussion that you will want to ensure has full knowledge and input from the various organizations that might have. Um, everyone is invited to a public meeting on the budget. Um, the rec committee has been designed to have representation from the various communities that might be significantly impacted. So you might want to give some thought to that. Further to the uh, new twin ice pads, um, have we got a date when that could be used? That was raised at a previous council meeting. Sorry, I didn't catch the question, Councilor Lemon. Uh, yes, at a previous council meeting, I requested uh, information on, uh, I think it was a tournament, whether or not we would have the rec center open at that time for that which would affect our bottom line, but also affects availability. And we were going to get a date on uh, the uh, access to the ice pads. My apologies, I just didn't catch it first time. We will have that information for you for the 19th of December. Sorry, just to Councillor Adair's point, and, and the motion was intended, uh, I mean, at least that was the, uh, explaining the intent was just to take it to the rec committee to get their feedback and, as, as the city manager said, to, um, I think, well, simply as that, that's what it's there for, a sounding board on different city <coughs> ideas, and there's a wide variety of people on that committee to see what their views would be on that, so, <coughs> I mean, it wasn't, that was just the idea. So the other thing about it, if there was to be a change there, obviously, um, you know, we've got signed contracts for ice right now, so it would be fall. There, a, a number of the minor or the summer groups, um, you know, are, are their, their registration starts February, I think it is. So, you know, there'd have to be some sort of fair phase in time if, if that was council's wish to, to look at that. <coughs>
I know, we all, we all miss Glenn. <clears throat> Glenn, if you're watching the live feed, we, we miss you. Uh, Wayne, under, uh, sorry on the tally sheet since we're getting into your departments now. There's a line that says anticipated, 75,000. I was meaning to ask you that at the beginning and I forgot. Yes, through your worship, that's for a large taxpayer that is in flux at the moment. And we're anticipating what may happen there and it would not be beneficial to the city. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship, and certainly moving ahead to our final meeting in February, we will have a, uh, a much more detailed, short presentation on exactly where our tax dollars come from and where they go, and it will include a number of pie charts, etc. We get a, um, there's no copy of the debenture schedule in here. Could we get, anyway, for tomorrow, could we? Yes, get we'll that? certainly bring that forward. Just a minor change, just uh, with respect to the Coliseum cost, an increase. Uh, we've transferred some money that was originally in the capital budget, which we believe should have been an operational cost, transferred over, and that was roughly about uh, $1,400 for blade sharpening for the uh, ice machine.
Thank you. I'm just wondering if, you know, 7.30 seems like a reasonable time to get out of here. I would rather get a few more things done tonight than find ourselves tomorrow at 8, wondering, gosh, I wish we'd done some things yesterday because we're going to be here till 9 or 10. I mean, it's not going to disrupt anything by getting a few more things done today that we could do. Tonight. a suggestion we do have a report from um, Brad on the band shell which we could have that discussion and get that dealt with. Seventeen A is the report number. Yes, I was. I, I, I'm very pleased about it as well, and I think it's it's really um, a good a good um, demonstration of sort of grassroots democracy happening. But I just wanted to answer the question. Several of the comments were, well, how did the city let it get this bad, and how did it get here? Well, now that I've worked on budgets for my second time now, I realize we don't put money in a lot of things because we just don't have it. And I think most of the old sounders realize we have to get the money from them, the taxpayers. And that was not, so if this can come up from the community and be um, an interest group that really wants to have this happen, I really endorse that too. And I, I can support the recommendation of the way in there. Thank you. Eric Galria, et cetera. Uh, there was a wonderful plan put together a couple of years ago for the um, uh, market building next door. And with more things going on in the market square, I wonder if we wouldn't be better having this community group thinking about raising funds and uh, 
and trying to move it to the market building so that we've got one central location that we can do things like this downtown instead of being spread out uh, and spread thinly both sides of the river with a bandstand that's uh, maybe past its prime and past its maximum uh, use if it wouldn't be better to try and do something like that in, in conjunction with the uh, with the market thank you worship the mover of the motion i just want to clarify so you're moving that proceed with demolition and then defer no that's the second part that's what i mean that's so that's where my question is i'm saying we move with demolition defer it or uh, defer it until june well, no, I'm just I, I'm just asking a clarification on the, on the word. Basically, because we've already had a group uh, that's come forward, then that removes the demolition portion automatically, uh, and the local citizens have come forward. The other thing, if we're going to hold a public meeting, we should hold it. Anything we do in consultation with the public group that's come forward. I personally would like to leave it in that location because location is part of the heritage and history. Uh, but I, I think we have to let this group, which has recently formed, gel a little bit and perhaps then a public meeting, but let them get their things there first. But specifically, Councillor Lemmon, my yeah, question Yeah, it's, it's, it's object one, or question one, sorry. Option one, sorry. So it's, oh, so just, sorry, it's option one that we're here moving. Yeah. yeah. Just, just for you, you worship, just maybe a bit of clarification and a bit of additional information. Um, the intention here was that the option would be selected for demolition, but simply to defer the actual act of demolition until sometime in June or July of 2012, simply to give that community group the opportunity and the time to be able to gather momentum and, be, and to achieve some type of program, whether it's a service program or whether it's a fundraising program. Um, just to add to that, uh, I have been already in contact with that community group, and we are already in the process trying to coordinate and arrange a date for that consulting engineer to inspect and look at the facility. And as far as Tommy, I mean, I'm not concerned about Tommy. He can certainly look at the facility now, tomorrow, next week, whatever suits their convenience. So. I think we can keep the process moving along. Um, you know, the only other aspect is just to, you know, we can revisit the second part of that motion or that recommendation should council decide just to go with the first part. Information that may be helpful to council, it, I recently um, attended a meeting of the Graber Home Builders Association and they're very interested in uh, supporting uh, the grassroots group that has come forward, as well as um, the, uh, the, the high school teacher who he uh, directed a lot of his students who did uh, quite a bit of renovations at the, uh, the Rice building. And um, he has uh, volunteered uh, his students uh, to do any construction work required as well. So um, I will be providing the contact uh, information to Mr. McRoberts for that meeting. In terms of public meetings, I would think that uh, Council Councillor Twaddle, in terms of being chair of uh, heritage and planning, uh, that might be the, the proper vehicle to host that. But uh, I'll uh, go back to my list here. Thank you, Worship. Um, I don't think I agree with anything anyone said so far on this. Um, I don't think we need to have a public meeting. I mean, I would certainly love to encourage this group to put the money and energy into any number of what I would think are higher priority items, but that's not what they wish to do. This is the project they wish to take on. <clears throat> but at some point, we have to fish or cut bait on this fan shell. It cannot stay there wrapped up in, in fencing for ever or even, I think, until the next budget deliberations. I think that the motion, the, the recommendation um, that we slate it for demolition, but we hold off on doing that until June 1st when we can get some sense of whether this community group is even 
moving down the path, doing a realistic um, remediation or fixing of that, of that property. I think anything else is just exacerbating the problem. If by June they have half the money raised and they have an engineer and they have a plan, I think this council would say, okay, let's go another two months or, or however, but there needs to be an end date. We can't be having this conversation next December talking about, well, well maybe we'll tear it down next summer of 2013 if we can't, you know, if they can't raise the money. They can either raise the money or they can't, and we would know by the summer whether that's happening. So. The only thing that I, the only action I can support is the re recommendation, which is that we slate it for demolition, but we hold off until June and see whether this group can, can come forward with cash and a concrete plan. Yeah, I would be willing to take part of what Councillor Adair has said, you know, for the positive spin that we review the status of the man shell on June 1st. And then if we can make, council can make a decision uh, June 1st or as soon thereafter, uh, whether to continue or not to continue, because at that time we'll have some kind of a picture. And that's not inconsistent with uh, status quo, except to change it, uh, that we will consider it on June the 1st of uh, 2012. Just change that date and if it satisfies what David wants, what Councillor Dare wants. Uh, the Director of Financial Services also pointed out a good point to me that, that there is a process effective June 1st that, that we basically would have to, uh, one, out, apply for a demolition permit and two, also go through the heritage process. It's not a heritage building, but it's on a heritage property, so we would have to go through a permitting and application review process. So certainly June 1st is a good time to start that, and that will allow time for whatever decision-making council needs to make. Yeah, I think I, uh, I would like to see a more, just a different approach in a way. Uh, I certainly understand if, we, if there isn't a community group that's going to take this on, then we will need to remove the building, but somehow putting that date of June June with a demolition order doesn't seem to be in keeping with the spirit of the community group that's emerged. So um, I'm not sure where we are with the uh, motion at the moment, it, but I, I wouldn't support a motion that's kind of pushing uh, to a June date uh, of demolition. I just don't think we, it doesn't feel like a very s s community minded approach to go. So. My motion does not say demolish, it says for reconsideration by Council June 1st. I, I agree with Councillor Adair on this issue. I'm really gratified that there are interested individuals in the community who want to come forward and take on this challenge. Um, I felt reasonably confident when we had this discussion an earlier budget meeting that that would happen. But I believe strongly that there needs to be a date by which there is a real show of intent. <clears throat> and so I don't support Councillor Lemon's motion. I believe that we absolutely have to have a deadline on this. And without in any way comparing the two groups, I would remind Council about the last time that we had an initiative raised around saving the structure and own sound in a community group that was going to take on and, and uh, raise the money. And that was the Centennial Tower Project. <clears throat> and the city agreed, and the money was never raised, and the city ended up putting the bill for that reconstruction. Um, as I say, I, I don't want to compare 
in any way the two groups, but I think it's important that <clears throat> we make it clear that we're willing to give all kinds of moral support to this, but I don't believe there's any city funds available for this project. And certainly, as was mentioned, there are other, I think, more worthy projects. As a matter of fact, if there's that kind of money available, there is a plan for First Avenue West, which will <clears throat> create a much more usable space to accomplish what the band shell accomplishes. And if there were that kind of money available in the city budget, I would certainly be encouraging moving forward with the First Avenue, completing the First Avenue West redesign. Or, as somebody mentioned, looking at the Market Square. So I think it's really important that we say there is a date by which the plans need to be in place and, and ready to go. <coughs> and we can always, you know, if somebody comes along and says we're 75% of the way there and we're going to make it, we can always change that. But I think that, <coughs> that if we leave it open-ended, we, we run a risk of having this discussion in time for the 2013 budget. Uh, so I don't support the motion as it's put forward. I, I would support, sorry, I would support the recommendation <clears throat> with the June 1 deadline being the date we begin the process of proceeding to demolition, demolition which still I think is probably a 60 day period to go through those. Yeah. Yeah, so that would that would be June the 1st. That would mean that we would be looking at uh, an August demolition at the earliest. But that would, that would clearly set out a deadline by which things need to be well underway. So I don't, I don't support the motion as it's put forward. Well, just for clarification, Council, I think when the, the group uh, becomes a slightly more mature, um, you're going to see them come forward in large part with um, in-kind services. So materials, uh, labor. Um, I would be surprised if you didn't see a request to waive the building permit fee, to waive DCs potentially if they applied. So council just need to be prepared for those sorts of discussions. And the challenge, of course, for the city will be that with volunteer labor building a public structure, it gets complicated. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, I don't foresee them coming to you and saying, okay, we're going to pay X company to build this structure. They're going to come forward and say, we have a variety of volunteers and expertise that's going to contribute both labor and materials to do this. And that is going to require a relatively significant amount of support by city staff. Just um, in regards to those comments, I think we may be looking at those types of partnerships with community groups more in the future than we have in the past. It reminds me a bit of Habitat for Humanity where volunteer laborers come and build to code and it's safe enough for people to live in as homes and we're all very proud of it. I think um, we're not going to have the resources in our community, particularly in light of this budget discussion, to be able to, to do these types of projects and we may very well be looking to groups like this group who will mobilize the community to build something and, and, and there we'll have to be looking at appropriate codes and safety and all the rest but I think if Habitat for Humanity can do it for people, we should be able to do it as well.
I am not in disagreement with, with either of the two councilors' comments. It was comment made, though, to make council aware that staff time is going to have to be applied to this. In fact, one of the main organizers is uh, someone who has worked on uh, habitat facilities uh, uh, as well. So her and I had a very good discussion about that. This is in no way saying that that's an inappropriate exercise, but the current resolution speaks to raising the required funds. And that's not quite, I think, what will happen. I think it will be a process that brings a number of uh, resources together to get this done. And that will include resources from the city. Thank you, Worship. I just wanted to be clear on the demolition process. So as Council's aware, Queen's Park is a cultural heritage landscape. The only designated feature in that is the cenotaph. However, because you're in a designated landscape, um, Council would apply to itself to demolish the property. Um, within 90 days, you would have to make a decision and you are obligated under the Act to consult with the uh, Municipal Heritage Committee, which is part of our CPAC committee. So, and then you, know, you can obviously consent to the application or, or refuse it. So you have 90 days in which to do that once you would make the application. Thank you, Mr. I have no um, no issue with donated services or, or labor. I kind of took from speaking to some of the um, individuals involved and, and looking at their Facebook page that that's in fact almost entirely how this project would happen. Um, I have no difficulty leaving building fees and, and all of that is our contribution and for staff support, um, it may help us build capacity as we may need community groups to step forward but I really think there needs to be a deadline and if June is too early then July or August or something if I'm told that I have an essay due in two weeks or an essay due in four weeks how I approach doing that essay does not change it's done in the last week before, <laughs> before whenever you have six weeks it's still the last week that's how people operate they operate towards deadlines and I think we need to have some kind of deadline of June 1st is too is too early then July 1st or August 1st or or something but there needs to be a deadline to, to all of this In consideration of a report dated December 7, 2011 from the Facilities Manager, City Council hereby reviews the status of the ban gel on June 1, 2012. Through you, Your Worship, just wanted to make sure that uh, Council understood that the June 1st date wasn't arbitrary date set out there just to put out. Um, it was looking at the fact that we had a certain timeline, we had to go through process of getting a permit, um, getting through the uh, heritage process, such that we could actually complete the demolition, undertake restoration, and have basically grass growing before we hit our winter season or our fall season. So backing up, I basically backed up through the process and said, well, if I need this much time for that, I need this much time for that, I kind of came up with the June 1st time frame. So if we start pushing back from June 1st, then we are actually pushing possibly into 2013. Um, I apologize, I was listening, but can you just do the clerk um, just read that one more time because no I problem. think it's something I 
and support what I need. That in consideration of a report dated December 7, 2011 from the facilities manager, City Council hereby reviews the status of the band shell on June 1, 2012. If I can follow up with you, Brad, you were uh, counting backwards then that July f or June 1st would be the date that the, uh, the wrecking ball comes in, or that's the day that the applications would start, so we're really after that. A and if we pass this motion that allows us to uh, June 1st to wait to make the decision, we make it right around there, depending when the council meeting is, does not, that not still allow you to hit the same timetable? Absolutely. I mean, the, the June 1st is the point in time when not the wrecking ball comes out, but the process to proceed with demolition begins. So certainly if that was the decision of council, that would still fit within the time frame. Um, I can't support that motion. It makes absolutely no reference to what the terms of any reconsideration might be. Um, certainly the recommendation makes clear, although it talks about required funds, I think the recommendation that's in front of us, you know, could simply be amended to say further that should, should plan and sufficient resources not be in place by June 1st. But the motion as such simply says we're not going to do anything until June the 1st and then we're going to start to decide what we're going to do with the van shell. So I don't support the motion. I, I, I really think we need to set out some clear timelines. That's seven months to come up with the resources and a plan. And I certainly hope that these community-minded citizens can do that. But I think, I think in fairness to them, as well as to everybody else in the city, they need to have a date to which they're working too. And you know what, with the enthusiasm that they started out with, I'll bet as soon as it's a decent time, they'll be here in April saying, we're ready to go. And that would be great. That would take the deadline off the table. But I, I, I absolutely believe that, that we need to have a firm commitment on this and clear understanding of what it is we're going to do. Chamberlain? Councillor Lemon? In favor. Councillor McManaman? In favor. Councillor Purden? In favor. Councillor Twaddle? Councillor, er, sorry, Mayor Haswell? I'd like to see the engineer's report uh, the structural engineers report uh, to see that uh, in fact that the building or the structure can withstand uh, the winter months and the snow load and so on um, if the uh, if the engineers report comes back and says that it is extremely um, fragile then I would urge uh, council to reconsider and to proceed immediately with the demolition uh, in terms of uh, public safety uh, following that uh, then plans could maybe come back in terms of, you know, rebuilding a new, uh, a new band shell. So that's uh, essentially my reasoning for the opposition. So the motion was carried with six in favor and two opposed. 